Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Mike Walker and today I'm hoping to freeze motion with a single small flash. I'm using it off camera with a trigger connected to my GH5. The subject of my motion freeze is a glass of water and a spoon. The idea is to simply drop in the spoon and hopefully capture the splash with a single flash. It's going to be a question of timing and trial and error to get the perfect image. Speed lights, also known as flash guns, are capable of producing very bright light at speeds up to a 20,000th of a second. This Godox 350 gun is a small basic camera top flash unit which can be triggered through the camera's hot shoe or in this case I'm using it off camera with a Godox XT1 trigger. The first thing I want to do is select the camera's sync speed. On most cameras this is about a 200th to a 250th of a second which is the fastest shutter speed that will capture the flash with a whole sensor open as opposed to the shutter curtain scanning the focal plane. If you select a shutter speed higher than the sync speed you will see a black band across the exposed image. There is a thing called high speed sync which gets round this by firing off multiple flashes during the scanning of the shutter curtains so the whole of the sensor is equally exposed. But because the high speed sync fires the flash multiple times it's not the best at freezing motion. The flash needs to be single and as short as we can get it to give us the sharpest image. I'm using my Panasonic GH5 and I've set the shutter to the camera's sync speed of 250th of a second. I want the ISO to be low so I've set this to the camera's native ISO of 200 to give me the cleanest image possible without any noise in the image. All that leaves now is the aperture. I'll use the aperture to give me the correct exposure. Having locked the ISO and the shutter speed to their best settings in this situation, there's virtually no ambient light in this image. If I turn the flash off and take a picture, it should be close to black so the flash will be the only source of light. I'm using a reflector directly opposite the flash to give me a little extra light on the other side of the glass. On top of the camera I have my Godox X-T1 flash trigger which will control the settings of my Godox 350 speed light and fire it. I'm using a shutter release cable so I don't move or shake the camera on the tripod. I'm working in manual mode on the 350 flash so I've set up the X-T1 to trigger the power settings from full power to 128th power as I prefer to have full control of the settings. So we've got the ISO set to the Panasonic GH5's native ISO of 200 and we've got the shutter speed set to its sync speed of a 250th of a second. Um, I'm just going to focus and I'm going to focus on the spoon as it enters the water. So I'm reckoning sort of in the middle of the liquid where it's going to give me a nice splash. So uh, let's have a look. That looks about right. I've got my Panasonic um, 10 to 25 millimeter f 1.7 zoom lens on, which is a magnificent lens. So I'm happy I'm in focus. I'm happy I've got the right ISO. I'm happy I've got the right shutter speed. So there's just two more settings to, uh, to worry about and that's the uh, aperture and the flash power. So the flash power I'd like that to be as low as possible, although that's going to be dimmer, the dimmest setting from the flash gun, but it's going to be the fastest so it's going to freeze better. So um, at 128th power it's going to be a shorter burst of light but obviously it's going to be not as bright so I need to compensate that. So I'd like to keep 128th power uh, so that just leaves me now the aperture. If I can get all those parameters together, the ISO at uh, 200, the shutter speed 250th because I want a black background. Let me just show you what happens when uh, you increase the shutter speed. Um, we've got uh, at the moment there at 250th that is the shutter speed, say at f8, that would be the picture. So there's a little bit of specular highlights there but basically it's black. Um, which is what I want and that's great for the background. You can see the reflector on the right hand side there but I'm going to get rid of that in Photoshop afterwards and we'll, we'll do that together. If I make that exposure the correct exposure for F8 um, we'd go, be going down to, it's looking about a fifth of a second. That is the exposure with 
just the ambient light, but we can see the background, we can see the texture, we can see the material, we can see the reflector very brightly. When we take the picture with the flash and the low powered flash and the very high speed flash, we won't see much of the table, we'll see a little bit of the reflector because the light's bouncing off it. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to go back to my sync speed shutter which is 250. I'm going to turn the trigger back on and let's have a look at a picture at the sync speed at f8 at this 128th power and that's looking pretty good in fact I think I've probably nailed that one let's just have a look at the um, some other let's try 5.6 might be a little bit brighter I do like 5.6 I think that's where we're going to be and we can see a little bit of the flash in the top left hand corner there and we can see the reflector obviously without the reflector it doesn't look as nice on the right hand side of the glass so I'm going to keep the reflector there but we'll get rid of that in Photoshop um, and the top left so we've got a nice image we are zoomed in at 25 millimeters on the uh, 10 or 25 millimeter lens we're smacking focus so we're ready to go with the uh, the spoon dropping um, so I'm going to use my left hand to uh, fire the shutter and I'm going to use my right hand to drop the spoon it's all a question of now there's a spoon before it got in the glass that was very late that looks a good one that's a great one Yep, that looks like the one, I don't think we'll do any better than that. So, now that we've captured the perfect image, let's have a look in Photoshop and see what we can do just to tidy it up and uh, make it look really good. So here we are on the computer in the edit suite and uh, we're in Lightroom. I've just looked at the pictures. Uh, there's quite a few that I like. Um, probably five or six that are really nice. Um, out of the 40 probably that we took, 40 or 50 shots. Uh, good fun really throwing that spoon in that glass. Um, but here's where we see the uh, the end result and what it's been all about. We need to get all the images the same. They're all shot the same, they're all the same scale. The camera never moved, the glass never moved. The only things that moved in the frame were the water and the spoon. Um, everything else was the same. So that's great for doing this type of thing. So if we take one of the images, I'm going to use, um, which one shall I use? Let's use this one. And uh, I'm going to go into Photoshop. So I'm going to edit in Photoshop. That opens the Photoshop window. Uh, I've already got a few documents open here. I've done a little bit of prep work before uh, before you came along. So um, what I'm thinking is the table's going to go, the reflector's going to go. So um, ideally I want a jet black background. I want everything black except the glass and the water and the spoon. So the first thing I'm going to do is a copy of the image as a backup, just in case. Um, so it's Control J and I'll turn that off, but I know now that I've got a copy of it in its original form as it came in. These are raw files, so we've got all that latitude for exposure and we can do all sorts with the image. It makes it a lot more flexible, a raw image as opposed to a JPEG image. So we've got our backup copy. Uh, if we make it a smart object, then um, we can go back and do things that we've already done. Um, it's not carved in stone, any changes that we make even to this image. So I'm going to go to uh, Camera Raw, into the Camera Raw filter, which is just like Lightroom. It's got all the same parameters as Lightroom. And I'm going to do the alterations to make it uh, the type of image that I want. So I want it to be a really contrasty image. So I'm going to really bump up the contrast there, up to 68 there. I'm going to leave the highlights where they are. The shadows I'm going to take right down to zero because that's going to make the background black. If I press this button here, that will show me what is black. Now it's not quite black there, and that's because that's where the flash was, that's where the flash went off. Let's see if this makes a difference. Uh, yes it does. 
So I'm just going to tweak that back to there. So now I know that everything behind the glass and the water and the spoon is black. So I'm happy with that. Clarity I'm going to increase. i turn that off now, it's done its job. Um, the clarity I'm going to increase to about 23, 25, somewhere around there. D hairs, I'm just going to give it 10, 10 on D hairs. That adds more contrast, a little bit more punch. Uh, vibrancy I'm going to add as well to about 27, 25, 27 is fine. Saturation a little bit as well because the colours in the glass really pop. Um, you can see there's some lovely blues there. Um, that's because of the white balance and the orange from the table. So um, the, the white balance was a little bit on the cool side. So uh, that's what's given us the blue tint there. And I don't want to white balance it because I quite like that look on the glass. Uh, I'm going to OK that and come out of camera raw. And that's giving me now the image that I want. The next thing I need to do is to get rid of the table and the reflector and uh, make those as black as the background, which we know is now very much black. So I'm going to do that with a brush. Make sure the colour's black in there. It's jet black, that's fine. Check the numbers, all zeros. And then I'm going to get rid of the reflector. Very, very simply. Like this. And the table's going to go next. Now the easiest way to get rid of the table is I'm going to click there and I'm going to shift uh, hold the shift and come across and it will stay in a straight line right across. So you may have noticed that I actually took away the bottom of the glass. Um, I knew I was going to do this because it was you know it was in front of the table. Uh, so I needed to replicate the bottom of the glass which I did previously and uh, I took a selection of the glass uh, here. So there is my selection of the glass which I, I made from uh, from one of the other pictures and uh, we need to put that back. So the images we had it there and as we've cleared it there we need to put that selection back and there it is it's back um, so that is our final image and now what I want to do is um, show you how to uh, put several images on one canvas if you like and uh, because it's a black background there's, there's a lot more we can do with it so let's do that we'll do a new document and I'm going to fill with black um, if you place embedded so I'm going to place that one place embedded picture number one enter place embedded picture number two enter place embedded picture number three enter and then number four so you'll notice that uh, you can't see the full image because of the uh, you know the black on each side of the image. Um, but if we change the blending mode to uh, screen, there we are. They're all now on screen, so we can see the image now. And what screen does is uh, it makes all the black in any image transparent. And there we are. There's our images with the, um, the lovely splashes of water. Well that's it for this episode on flash photography. Thanks for staying with us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the notification bell and I'll catch you in the next one.